you can see here the three instruments which we will present today for the live presentation we have the pts 3.3 and pts 2.3 genix the pps the power source is not available but i can tell you something about the power source it's almost the same like the pts uh, 3.3 genix power source now let's have a look to the test setup which i have prepared for you on the left side you see a three phase four wire direct connected meter so-called combinational meter for active reactive energy and we will test the active energy led with a one scanning head sh 2003 connected to the impulse input one of our pts 303 genix now let me change to the live view. So here you can see the real setup is the PTS 3.3 Gen X. And on the left side, the meter connected with uh, high current cables. So the PTS 3.3 Gen X is a so-called portable test system which uh, which is a, a combination of three phase four wire current source and a three phase four wire reference standard plus 0 0.05 and there is also an error evaluation system integrated with two independent impulse inputs. Now let me change the position of the camera to the front view. And I would like to tell you something about uh, the main connections and some special features or new functions compared to the predecessor, the PTS 3.3C. So let's start on the left side. So here we see the main connections, the current connections. So here we have the 120 ampere connections with a current range of 1 milliampere to 120 ampere, beside 12 ampere connections from 1 milliampere to 12 ampere. For the source mode, the output power is 60 VA at three internal ranges, 12 ampere. 80 ampere and 120 ampere. This is better than at the British sensor. There we had only two ranges, 10 ampere with 25 VA and 120 ampere with 60 VA. So we have more output power here than with the older instrument. If you use the instrument as a reference standard only, there is also a speciality. Then you can look to the current input like one input with two connectors. So if you measure, for instance, 10 milliampere with the high current connector or with the 12 ampere connector, it doesn't matter. Inside it's the same. So you get the same accuracy. Let's have a look to the voltage connection. So we have four connectors for the three phases and neutral. So there is also a difference to the old device. So here we have a combination of voltage inputs and output connectors. With the older device, this was separated. The range of the voltage output goes up to 480 volt phase two. The measuring range, if it's used as reference standard, starts at 10 millivolt for burden measurement and goes up to 500 volt phase neutral as a maximum. So these are the voltage connections regarding output power. We have 30 VA as at the predecessor equipment. So this is the same as, as before. Let's have a look on the right side on the top. So there we can see the supply connector. This is also new. Now here we have a two pole supply connector. So we don't have protecting earth like uh, we have with the predecessor or like most of the competitors have. So here a two pole connector, a fuse and a power switch. The range is 88 volt to 164 volts. So standard range for electronic equipment, which is used worldwide. 
but there is another special feature. There is a, a relay built in for protecting the instrument. If the voltage is higher than 276 volts, the relay will cut off the instrument to protect the instrument. So this is a new protection feature. If you look to the next section here, so this is the, are the connectors for communication, for accessories, and here we have the memory cards, the so-called SD cards for storage of results and settings. Let's have a look to the connector here. So this is a USB type B connector normally used to communicate uh, with the computer, to run calibration, to remote control the device, or to read out results. On the right side, you see the ethernet connection. So this is to connect to a network, or to make a point point communication, uh, point point uh, connection to a computer. Inside the device, we have a WLAN module for wireless connection. And with these two Ethernet connect, uh, connections, if you are connected to a network with wired or wireless, you can use the built in web server. So, this is also a new feature of the Genix series. And with this web server, you can remote display the user interface and you can remote control the device with this uh, with a web server on a mobile phone, tablet, or notebook. Uh, in principle, on any device which uh, can run a web browser. On the left side here, you see two USB type A connectors. So these connectors can be used to connect accessories like a mouse and or a keyboard. In this case, I have connected a mouse. So we can use the mouse also to operate the instrument to see this later on. And then besides the, the SD card, memory card, which is removable. So in fact, you can say the storage is unlimited because you can exchange the, the, the memory card. Below, we have the, select, uh, the connections related to the reference standard. On the left side, we see two impulse inputs. So these are two independent impulse inputs. You can say it's like a two position test bench. The second input can be configured as output to calibrate this device against the higher class standard. On the right side, we have two of our UCT universal current transducers. And these two connectors can be used to connect any of our standard uh, options like uh, clamp on CT, 120 ampere, 1000 ampere then uh, flex 3000 or also the high voltage sensors of the amplified wire three up to 2000 ampere or 40 kilovolts. They can all be connected here to these sockets on the right side. Now maybe it's the point to tell you something about the uh, power source, PPS 3.3 Genix, that the case and the user interface or the connections are almost identical, almost only this part here is missing, the, the part related to the reference, impulse inputs, uh, clamp connectors, of course, this is missing, this is not needed for the power source. The operation is, of course, also locked for reference and sequence, so we'll have only the source operation. But regarding operation of the source part and specifications, all what I will tell you later on, for the PTS 3.3 Genix is also valid for the PPS 3.3 Genix. This is exactly the same. Regarding operation, we have the main operation is the top screen display. Then we have an alternative operation with a turnable joystick. Most of you may know this already from the PWS 2.3 Genix. So the reference meter functions, in fact, are almost identical to the PW as 2.3 Genix. As a third or a second alternative, you can also operate the instrument by the mouse or by a keyboard. So this can be useful 
in the laboratory. Now, let me change the view to the display. Tell you something about the operating concept. It needs some time to focus here. It will come. So, right. So, if you look through the structure, if you know our instruments, they have all similar structure. We use buttons with a graphic on it to show the function. What is new with the Genix user interface? We have on the right side. We have so-called page or menu buttons, which are showing the function. And I can now use the mouse. You can see here a red mouse key. So if I select the function on the right side, like reference meter, then on the left side, functional buttons are shown for this reference meter part, like meter for error measurement, load value measurement, waveform harmonics, register test, CTPT burn and ratio measurements, some special functions and setting of the reference. If I go to source, I have other buttons here, like sinus value switch on, adding of harmonics, ripple control signals, slider operation. And these are settings of the source. Then here for the portable test system, we have an additional functionality, the sequencer. So the device can run automatic sequences. You will see this later on in the presentation of Reto. Then we have a main function, DB for database. So there, all results can be accessed. You have addresses, of customers, meter types, meters, transformers, and general settings of the instrument. Here may be interesting. In these general settings, you can set up clock time and date, but also here you can set up the mode. So the basic mode is test system, but you can change to reference and source. And then you can see that the sequence button is blocked. And the third mode is measure only. So then also the source button is blocked. So this is the reference meter only. So we can use the PTS 3.3 Genix also just as reference standard. Let's change back to test system. To go back of a submenu, you press the exit button. Further, we have here on the right side a help button. So this is also a new feature on the Genix series that the operation manual is built in to the instrument. So I can access here the full operation manual and click two chapters. There is also a help button here. So this button can be used to jump in the corresponding chapter of the operation manual at any function. So we see direct help to a function which you use. Okay. At the bottom, you can see the status indication. So with three sections and on the left side, status of the reference standards in the, in the middle, the status of the power source and on the right side, capacity, occupation of a memory card and date and time. So general settings of the instrument. If you operate with the turnable handling button, we can see a red frame moving over the keys. It's on the left side. And so you can move this red frame to different buttons and then press to activate the function. So this is uh, an alternative possibility in case if somebody doesn't want to use the touch screen or if he needs to wear, uh, if gloves needs to be worn, then this would be a good option to operate the instrument also. Okay, this to the basic structure and the operating elements. Now, let me show you some simple operation, maybe typical for laboratory use, which is probably the main application of such a device. So I will prepare and set up a low point and switch on the source. Then we will go to the reference standards and run an error measurement. So let's start with the source. 
I click here the source menu. Then I go to this UI fee menu to set up sinus values. You see everything is zero here. So first I need to go to the parameters, to this low point menu. We know our meter is a three phase four wire meter. So I select the network three phase four wire. The meter has a nominal voltage of 230 volts. So I will enter for phase neutral voltage 230 volt. I can press the enter key several times to overtake the same value to the other phases. For the current, the nominal current is five ampere, but I will switch on a higher current, for example, 20 ampere. I repeat, it's enter to overtake to current two and three. Then I can define the phase angle between current and voltage. For example, 30 degree phase one, two, three. Here I can change the phase rotation, right or left, two possibilities. We leave it at left, right, sorry. Then I will program a frequency of 50 hertz. So typical, this is 50 or 60 hertz or synchronized to line frequency. So now this is prepared, I go back. Now we can see that the values are prepared here, but not switched on. To switch on, I have to press the on button here. And now these values are switched on. We can see the measured values up here. You can see the vector diagram and the waveform. So a nice overview. Now let's change to the reference with the button on the upper right side. I go to the reference, to meter function for meter testing. I cannot start here because I first have to set up the error measurement. We have here a setup for the two inputs. We use input one. And first we have to define what we like to test, uh, active energy or reactive energy. In our case, we test active energy. So I will select P sum, so active sum power plus minus direction as reference. Then we have to enter the meter constant of the meter. This is in our case, 500 impulse per kilowatt hour. Then we have to define a test duration. For example, 10 impulses. You can enter impulses or seconds. We do it with impulses. We can do statistics. So I define three repetitions means there are three measurements done over 10 impulses and then an average value is calculated in the standard deviation. I can enter a tolerance, which is typically the tolerance of the meter. Here we have a class one meter. So I enter minus one to 1%. 1 we use the scanning head Then I go back. And now I can start error measurement. We see here the progress it counts up to 10 impulses. As soon as we have reached 10 impulses, the error is indicated. I can switch the display. So we can see this is the second run. And this is the third run. And then we can save the results if we go to this cover on. And in the simplest way, I press save, new, file and then I could say maybe error zero one, just as example. And then the results are saved on this point. Now I could go back to source and change the load settings, go back to error measurement and do a new measurement. So this is the, the principal manual operation. But let's stay on the, on the source side. So before I have changed the values manually here, but you can do it simpler. You can also load safe, redefine settings. I have done the settings absolute in voltage and current and phase angle, but you can also do it relative like here. If you indicate percentage of nominal voltage, percentage of nominal current and a power factor. So I can, for example, load these settings. And this means in our case, 230 volt 
five ampere, zero degree. Then I have to press start again to overtake these new settings. Now you can see it has switched on with 230 volt and five ampere. So this possibility to save settings is, is I think very interesting. I think there we are, we are maybe better than the competition. So we have a lot of uh, positions where you can save settings. So this can help you in the operation of the instrument. Now let's go to another function, which is maybe interesting. These are the harmonics. So I would like to add some harmonics. What you see prepared here is a typical type test signal used for type testing of electricity meters. So it's the fifth harmonic. So you have to generate 10% of fifth harmonic in voltage and 40% of fifth harmonic in current. So you can prepare this individual for each phase. You can save it also. And if you have loaded this, if the basic waveform is switched on, you can add these harmonic signals to the basic waveform. If I go back to this button, you can see now the harmonics which are switched on. Here I can also select which waveforms I would like to see. So I think this is a very nice feature, especially for this type of instrument, which is used in laboratories. I, I think it's interesting for R&D laboratories, for meter manufacturers, or maybe for laboratories which offer type testing for electricity meters. And if you do type testing of electricity meters, then the requirements for some test signals are high regarding harmonics. So the specification for generation of harmonics for this system is the same as for the PPS 400.3. So means we can generate second to 31st harmonic, second to sixth harmonic with maximum 40%, from the seventh to the 31st, maximum 10%, and the sum of all harmonics can be 40%, and sum of seventh to 31st can be 10%. So this is, I would say, a rather restrictive specification, but it has a reason. I will explain it later on. In some tenders, uh, that is required to have to generate harmonics up to the 40s, up to the 50s, or up to 63rd harmonic. This is mainly driven by competition. So the customer himself, I think, is not asking for a big content of harmonics. So he is uh, looking for generation of time test signals. You may know that. Typical type test signal is phase fired waveform, 90 degree phase fired waveform in, uh, in current. To generate such a type test signals, you need much more harmonics than only up to the 31st. You need harmonics up to the 63rd order. We can do this also with the PTS3.3 Genix and almost with any of our power sources, but we can do this only if it's controlled by calibration. And to show this to you, I would like to change now to calibration. So I will switch. The calibration window. Okay, now we can see Calibration, I'm connected via the USB Type-B connector with the PTS 3.3 Genix. And here from calibration, I can remote manually control the PTS 3.3 Genix also. And I have prepared here on the operation, manual control measurement. I've prepared a setup. So the basic setting is three uh, phase four wire. 130 volt, 5 ampere, 
30 degrees. With the button down here, I can switch on this basic waveform. But now here in calibration, I can define different special waveforms. So I have defined here a special waveform continuous setting. And this is, in this case, a new type of signal. It's a so-called phase-fired waveform at 135 degree. I talked to you before about 90 degree. Last year, uh, the IC standards have been released newly with an addition to, and there they have also defined new type of signals. So beside 90 degree phase shift, you have also to do tests at 45 and 135 degree phase shift. And the signal at 135 degree phase shift uh, has the highest requirements regarding harmonics. So if you can do these type test signals with a power source, you can do any of the type test signals which are defined in the international standards, IEC or ANSI or international recommendation R46. Now, let me switch on this type test signal. I can do it with the button down here. And let us have a look to the waveform. So down here, now you can see the waveform down of the current. So it's, as it should be, cut at 35 degrees. But what you have to look at is the upper display. So the histogram, and you can see here, this is the histogram of the current. So here is the fundamental 100%. And we have all odd harmonics from the third up to the 63rd. So you can see, this calibration, PTS 3.3 Genix can measure up to the 63rd harmonic and it can generate up to the 63rd harmonic. And if you look to, look to the values, so for example, the third harmonic is 86%, 50 is 63%, so much higher than the specified 40%. If you look to the sum of all these harmonics, they are almost 400%, so 10 times almost 10 times more than what we specify. Now you could say, why do we not specify generation up to the 63rd, some maximum 400%? There is a reason. So we cannot guarantee that this will work for any combination of harmonics with high content of harmonics and any load. So it could be that the output of the amplifier start to oscillate and then the amplifiers could be damaged. And then we are confronted with warranty cases, but we don't want to have this. So this is the reason that our specification is rather restri restrictive. And if you look to the competition in the past, the competition has just copied our specification. So I think it's more important to tell the customers that we can do the type test signals if they would like to have this, but for you also important to know if you have a, a customer who wants this, if you have an order with this feature, you should mention this because it needs some special parameter set up in the device and some uh, configuration in the software also.